have not filled out this one, try to fill out. If you have already did, no problem. Okay. If you already did, fine. Check to see whether you have it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, uh, last week, uh, something happened in the third world. Uh, we have a election, uh, and they are still counting the votes in a occupied area, right? Uh, before, uh, here, this country called Iraq. Uh, now, Iraq has some problem with two major Muslim groups and one minority group. Okay, so one time people said, oh, that country should be divided into three parts. Now we have one Iraq, so what are the three parts of Iraq? Okay, two Muslim groups. Usually when we talk about Muslim groups, what do we have? The group, the good Muslim and the bad Muslim? No, we don't do that. The, the moderate and the radical, sometimes, but we don't give them label like this. Different denomination or different, you know, sects we call, S-E-C-T. Muslim. What kind of Muslim groups do we have? Well, it's just like everywhere, you know, you have those two groups. In, you have those two groups in Iran, you have those two groups in Iraq. Shiites and, and Sunnis, right? Okay. So in addition to Shiites and Sunni, what's the other group, the third group? Which, if we have that list, remember last week, that nation state, it's a nation without a state. Kurd Kurdish people, okay, so we have Kurdish. Now, the most important thing about this election is last time the Sunnis, okay, we call boycott the election. At this time, they end. They're still counting the vote, you know. Uh, in the future, if we have the absentee ballots, then we will have the same thing. You will not know the result until maybe, you know, a week later. So that's Shiite, Sunni, and Kurds. That's in Iran. And also we have this Sunnis uh, you know, in Iraq. In Iraq, the Kurdish people, also there are some Kurdish in Turkey. But more interestingly, in Turkey, uh, last week, the United States House Representative, House of Representatives, the Congress, passed the Foreign Affairs Committee. International Affairs Committee passed a resolution saying what happened 95 years ago, okay, in Turkey was a genocide. So what what's that genocide about? Uh, Li Jingde. Turkey in 1915. Armenian, okay, so there are uh, people said, okay, at least over one million Armenians were killed during World War II, uh, World War One, under the Ottoman Empire. Okay, so that's a big issue. Again, Armenia here, uh, right now you have a country called Armenia here, then you have Turkey, but a lot of Armenians have become, we call, uh, diasporas.
Now, what do we mean by this word? This word is interesting, very interesting diaspora. Chen Yong Yuan. Yeah. Uh, like uh, overseas. Taiwanese, overseas. Indians, overseas. Uh, Jews, overseas. Indians. What do you mean by this? Diasporas. The people who left their homeland and scattered around all over the world. Okay. So what 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 would we call them? In Chinese, that's fine. What do we call them? Not wildlife. <laughs> it's our people, somewhere else. So, uh, for example, uh, do we have those overseas Taiwanese uh, writers? You know, like uh, writing novels. Taiwan Zhuojia. Taiwan Taiwan. 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 Usually, when we have this word, we just basically say they are spreading all over the world. Okay? Like, uh, what would be a country having diaspora? Uh, Example will be uh, uh, after Iraq, right? The, after the Iraqi war, there are some Iraqi people also, you know, went to the U.S. Uh, or uh, what would be uh, most recent? Oh, last week we talked about Argentina, right? But Argentina didn't have a lot of them. But Central America during the 1980s, when you have a lot of violences, so people went to the United States, and they became almost like refugee immigrants. We call diaspora. So Armenian have a lot of diasporas. More people outside Armenia than in Armenia today. Okay, uh, in the United States, in California. Okay. They even elected one time in the 80s, they elected a governor of Armenian origin. Uh, so Armenians had a lot of this, and they said, we want the truth. The Turkish said, oh, well, that's 100 years ago. How many, how many people can remember what happened, you know, almost 100 years ago, right? Uh, and uh, that's during World War I. It's pretty messy. There were, you know, some of the Armenians were helping maybe, you know, the enemies, the Russians. Who knows? Russia was fight, you know, Turkey was fighting World War I on the Ottoman Empire. But Armenians won it labeled as, mass, as not just a massacre, but as genocide. So uh, this is an interesting issue coming, coming out. And then also American Vice President, Joseph Biden went to Israel. Remember we talked about Israel building those homes to support the dangerous building. Huh? And they announced that during Joe Biden's visit. So Americans said, hey, this is very, very, such an insult when Americans is trying to have peace for Middle East. And Israel said, oh, we want to have new settlements. Okay, so that's another issue. Uh, Finally, we want to ask one. Uh, last week, uh, there was a earthquake in a place. We have the military. Uh, we have the new government. Uh, Luo Ziyuan. Zhen Yiping. Yeah. Okay, do you remember which country witnessed a, a inauguration of a new president? And then during the inauguration, earthquake. Chile. Okay, so we have Chile as well last week. Uh, uh, that's another country uh, we call peaceful transfer of power. Alternation of party in power. Very important in democracy. Okay, Chile has that. Turn right wing this time. You know, Latin America always turn left. And this time they turn right. Yang Wenting. Is that right? Okay, now. Finally, it was some people uh, in nearby Taiwan, in Asia, they said, 
wow, we haven't been on the streets for a while. We need some vitamin D. They went on to demonstrate. Where? Red shirt army. Do you know red shirt? Like this red shirt here? Okay, where? Which country? Hmm? Taiwan? Thailand. Okay, but, but people confuse both, you know. Uh, people think Taiwan is Thailand, anyway. Uh, we, all have, we both have Russia armies, but I think the Russia armies are more active now. Uh, we don't have one anymore. Uh, but in Thailand, okay, what was the Russia army protested against? Okay, they tried to block the government. So the, the prime minister said, okay, I can, it's not safe for me with the, you know, the, in the government building, so where did he go? Well, he went to the military barracks. So the military is protecting the prime minister, right? Uh, he went to there, but what was, what was, what's the major you know, appeal this time for them? Like, you know, you protest, you have something, you have to have a theme, you have to have a focus. See, people confuse Taiwan with Thailand, so they protested, right? No? So why are they protesting? In Taiwan, we protest against corruption. In America, you have, we call the Tea Party and the Coffee Party established last week. Also, you know, just protesting, uh, the Tea Party protesting against the health care, you know, uh, against the big government. So what was the Red Army, Red Shirt Army in Thailand protested against? You know, anyone? What, what? Why are they protesting? I thought Thai people always, you know, very moderate, mild, right, Sawatika, and they, they, they just, uh, why they are protesting? The military? Hey, military. The last time they had coup was 2006. And then in 2008, at uh, the end of 2007, they had an election. So, why are you protest? It's not the military in government. They protest because the king's health is not very good. Right? So they protest saying, somebody must have done something wrong to cause the king's poor health. He's 82 years old. No, they delayed the protest because of his poor health. Now he seems stable. No, so they went on. So we still don't know why they protested. Because their former leader, Tak Singh, who is in exile in Dubai, uh, the Supreme Court said, hey, he made a lot of money where he was prime minister. So we need to confiscate his property, his assets. But they only confiscated half of them. Half of them, how much? About 1.3 billion US dollars. Not a lot. Susan Imaging. How much is that? It's about 400, Taipei, right? But that's only half. No, the other half, they said, oh, he was rich before he became prime minister. So that's it. You know, he owned those. And they were not happy with him. So what did we learn from Thailand? Taksing was very popular in the countryside. Okay? And he helped the farmers. He helped the workers a lot. And so the lower class, working class, supported him, but the middle class didn't like him. And so finally they used you know, military coup, overthrew him, and then his two puppets, you know the puppets? What is puppets? We have in China, we had a one time a puppet emperor. What is a puppet? Liu Su Hong. What is a puppet? Puppet is like uh, Han Xian Di is a puppet. <laughs> puppet. Uh, Pu Yi. In Chinese, 
Yeah. Well, not just that. <laughs> the last emperor, but he's also a puppet. Means what? He is also being controlled by the others, like the puppet show. I want you to move this way. I want you to sign this. Oh, I, I love to read all those, uh, you know, things that like uh, some of the officials have their daughter marry the young emperor and then control the emperor. Okay, and the daughter is split between the loyalty to the father or the loyalty to the, you know, husband. So puppet, we have uh, two puppet prime minister of Tassin, and one was removed because he had a cooking television show. They said, oh, prime minister, you cannot do a you know cooking show on television and receive money for that. So he was removed. Right? And the other one said the party was illegal, so they removed him. So right now what we have, since 2007, the end of 2007, we have a new government supported by the military since, uh, since the end of 2009, uh, so uh, 2008, so almost a year now. So they want to return to Tassin. So, some of the poor people, they think Tassin is the savior. Uh, they don't like the middle class. So what do we see? We see a polarized society in Thailand. And this is a very important because Thailand is not supposed to have a polarized political system. Okay, polarized. Now, what do we mean by polarized? Liu Yulan. Yeah, what is polarized? You know, polar bear. We all love polar bear. Polar. North Pole, South Pole. What is polarized? Yeah, basically, jihua, okay? North and South. So you have a polarized society, means the society is being going to the two separate way, and there is no middle ground. So Thailand does not have a presidential system. It has a parliamentary system. Parliamentary system is supposed people are going to have compromise, forming coalition, you know, people reach compromise, smaller party. So it's not going to be like, in the United States, you have Democrats and Republicans. In Taiwan, you have the green and the blue. In the United States, you have the blue and the red. Uh, that kind of polarization. Thailand is not supposed to have that, but now they're having. Uh, so it's interesting for us to, to take a look of those. Okay, now every semester when I teach third world politics, I give you one Chinese riddle. So, you know, every week, so you can think of one country. Okay, so this one is uh, okay. So which country is this one? Ye Tenghui. You tell my Ye Tenghui. Yeah, you can make a guess. You know, we teach about third world country. So every week I'll give you a Chinese riddle. The answer is one of the third world country. Of course, you have 144 to pick. Right? You have a list. Oh, Zhi Li, very good. Okay, so remember, this might be extra point in the final. Who knows? You know, uh, uh, it depends on how many third world uh, professional sports player we have. Okay, I think usually by the end of the semester, we are going into the baseball season. So we are going to have some player like Ramirez. You know, where does he come from? Anyone? Many. He was here in Taiwan. Which country did he come from? Many Ramirez? The guy with the turban? Hmm? Yes. U.S. Yeah, but, but, but obviously, I think he speaks with a different accent. 
right? I thought we love him here in Taiwan. Which country? Dominican Republic. Okay. Uh, remember, <laughs> by the end of, the, of, the, of June, when you take the final, I may give you a list of people who come from, like, uh, Johan Santana, oh, from Venezuela, someone from Mexico, someone from, you know, Puerto Rico, someone from Cuba, playing baseball in the United States. Or you can choose the, you know, the basketball one, you know, but basketball one mostly are from Europe and not from the third world. But we do have few from Africa, we have few from Argentina, we have one in, well, from Israel, you know, so we have a lot of those players, Turkey, right? Okay, but is that fair to the girls here? You know, if the extra point is on those, don't worry, we will give you extra points on all the female leaders of third world for you, okay? Okay, that's, uh, you know, the, every week we have to go through a little bit of the what's happening now and uh, coming back to the uh, chapter one and also chapter two, uh, the first question I think I have still want to ask you Wu uh, Boson. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember the two theories? You know, throughout the book, every chapter, we will look from one theory and then look at the others. Which two theories we have? The Dependency and what's the other one? Independence. No. <laughs> development. Okay, so we have development and dependency. Okay, now the next question. Which one emphasizes more international aspects? Which one emphasizes more internal? Internal. Which one emphasizes more internal? Which one emphasizes more international? Dependency and development, which one? Deve developmental uh, and... Uh, dependency. Dependency emphasizes which one? International. Okay. Dependency emphasizes the international aspects, right? Developmental almost emphasizes internal. Okay, so that's a very important thing. And also remember, in the book, it talks about dependency, uh, was popular in the 80s, 70s and 80s. Developmentalist was popular in the 50s and 60s. So the question is, what's been popular since 1990s? Okay, now, the reason, okay, I think 1970s and 1980s is what we find out that some of the depend developing countries, okay, do not a lot of countries have trouble of developing. Uh, that's one. You know, didn't follow what the West suggested, the stage. But we do have few, right? So we have those semi-periphery countries like Taiwan, South Korea became developed. Uh, but still dependent. So dependency become, we call dependent development. But still, uh, you cannot explain something happened uh, in Latin America and in East Asia because they didn't have democracy. Okay, it continued to be authoritarian. So internationally, uh, also we cannot understand why uh, those countries uh, were able to develop uh, within the world system, uh, but uh, development also has a big problem in 1979 when they have Iranian revolution okay, of 1979. Iran, a modernized country, suddenly going back to very fundamental religious uh, radicalism. So those are some of the setbacks for the, for the two theories. Now, uh, I think the new theory in the 1990s and 2000s 
is more about identity. Okay. Uh, all the problems we have is about identity. So we're going to look at those uh, uh, two theories in different chapters. But let's look at chapter two first, uh, because the w the first key word is we call decolonization. Chou Guan Chun. Yeah, what's the decolonization? You know, colony? Yeah. I mean, in Taiwan, we are very familiar with this right now, right? Uh, we call desinization. What do, what do we mean by desinization? The key word here. Okay, what is it? Designalization. I don't think China is controlling Taiwan right now. But we try to get rid of anything that is China. Right? Right? So what is decolonization? Okay, so that's the process. Uh, I hate all this uh, Z-A-T-I-O-N. I think there's something from, you know, the chemistry or something. Right? Means you became independent. Okay? Uh, you try to become independent. But this is a long process. You know, usually uh, we don't see a lot of countries it's almost like you don't overthrow a colonial government right away. Why? Wh which countries are the colonizing powers in the 20th century? Which country is, are the colonizing power that colonize other places? Japan, okay, Japan colonized Taiwan and Korea and what are other countries? France, Great Britain, in Africa, in Asia. Okay, now, but the first big anti-colonial war, where is it? According to our textbook, uh, Liao Yuqing. Yeah, which one? In the 18th century. Okay, uh, England uh, being colonized by by the French? Well, in a way, Great Britain was colonized by the French, right? Uh, way back in the 11th century, huh? William the Conqueror went there. Or they were conquered by Germany because uh, they got some German king to be their king. No, but Great Britain was the colonizing power of where? In the 18th century, there had been who overthrown, or at least forced them to stop colonization, independence. Okay, decolonization very important with independence, right? Next stop, you have independence. So, which country got the first independence from colonization? America. Okay. Oh, we can we can we can we say the Ming Dynasty? Oh, China finally, you know, became you know decolonized from the colonization of the Mongol. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, of course, the United States, right? United States, uh, and after United States, what other country became independent? Su Ho Li Yu Xin. Is there? Chen Zilin. 
after United States became independent, there is a wave, you know, people just follow, say, hey, look, America became independent, maybe we can do that. Right? Yao Hurinye. Sunkarinye, Yao Hurinye, has it? Your waiter, Yi Lo Shi, your Tinkum. Timinaka is a Yao Han Sun, Siba. Jibucha. Later, what happened? Okay, this country, okay, I'll, I'm giving you a hint. It's called Dao. Uh, recently in the news, just two months ago. Also in Western Hemisphere. You know Western Hemisphere? Which country? What is Da? For a third world country, I'm, you know, actually you have a bonus this week. <laughs> you have two. This country was in the news because of earthquake. Hmm? We already had another earthquake country called Zhili, right? Which one? Taiwan? Uh, tai yeah, but <laughs> not Taiwan. Which one? Just had an earthquake two, two months ago in January, very big one. Lots of people died. Uh, Haiti, hmm? right? This is a land in the middle of the ocean. Haiti, Hai Zhong the Di, ah, Dao. Okay, so Haiti was the second one, but 1804, okay, they got independence. And then we have a group of nations from Latin America becoming independent. I think you have learned some of their names uh, under. Uh, Simon Bolivar. And also uh, Saint Martin as well. Right? Bolivar and Saint Martin uh, in Latin America. So they all became independent during the Napoleon War from Spain in the early part of the 19th century. So that's what we call the first wave of decolonization first wave from the United States in the late 18th century to the beginning of 19th century uh, in Latin America. Okay, most of the country become independent. Uh, that's the first wave. And then we have the second wave uh, after World War I. So we have another person, very important also in Taiwan as well, Xu Xiaoming. Xu Xiao yeah. Uh, after World War I, there is a guy uh, from America say, A, we need to have self-determining nation. <sighs> Michael Jordan is in the middle of sleeping, huh? So what is MZZJ Ming Zhu Zi Jue? Ming Zhu, Zi, Oh, Jue, Oh, Okay, so Ming Zhu, Zi, Jue, Who brought that idea after World War One, And which influenced China? You have the May Force Movement, people say, protesting against Japan. Who was the American president? Roosevelt, well, that's World War Two, World War One. Hmm? Anyone? Which president? The only president uh, whose background is a political scientist is a university professor, uh, president of the university. Woodrow Wilson, okay, Wilson, President Wilson, 
uh, so he started his Ming Zhu Zi Jue idea. Now, uh, after World War One, earlier we mentioned which empire collapsed after World War One. Hmm? Wen Wei Zhong, which empires collapsed after World War One? A Chinese empire collapsed b- before World War One, I, I think. Qing Empire finished before World War One. Which other empire still existing during World War One and then collapsed? Ottoman Empire, you know Ottoman. Uh, Ottoman, this one, Turkey, right? So in addition to that, there is another one. Russian uh, collapse, but Soviet Union took over, right? Uh, also, Russia, I mean, you know, had a revolution during World War One, but there is used to be a big country collapse, and parts of its territory became independent. In Europe, which empire? This empire, Austria, uh, this empire helped Germany as predicted, uh, as predicted by Confucius. Right? Confucius predicted what would happen during World War I. How did he predict it? Confucius said, De bu gu bi you ling. Mm? So Austria went to help you know, with Germany. Confucius, you need to read as a prophecy. Uh, you yuan de. <laughs> Austria became co- collapsed. What country coming out of Austria? H- Hungary. Hungary was already, you know, we call Austro-Hungarian Empire, right? So Hungary came out of Austria. What other countries? Later we also find Czech as well. We also have some of the countries between Austria and Ottoman Empire. Uh, all the, we call the Balkan countries, became independent. So that's the second wave after the end of World War I. Uh, countries like uh, Black Mountain. Hmm. What is Black Mountain? Monte Negro. Mont, that's a mountain, right? Negro. Countries like uh, Bosnia, uh, Herzegovina, uh, countries like uh, uh, Bulgaria, uh, Romania, all those countries became independent uh, after World War I. So we have a lot, the second wave. And in addition to that, Ottoman Empire collapsed. So some of the Middle Eastern countries became independent, who used to be under Ottoman Empire. Countries like Egypt, Saudi Arabia, you know, Jordan, C- Syria, uh, those n- Lebanon, those became independent. That's the second wave. The third wave is after World War Two. Okay, again, it's a collapse of empire. Uh, the first wave, we if Great Britain didn't collapse, but Spain was becoming much weakened. Okay. So that's the reason Latin America all became independent. And then after World War I, Austria and Ottoman Empire collapsed. So you have Southeast Europe, Southeastern Europe and Middle East becoming independent. And then the third wave is after World War II. Now, which empire collapsed this time? Uh, Wang Yuhong. Emma. Yeah, which empire? Collapse. I won't say collapse, but decline. How about that one? Decline. Uh, the sun never set on this empire. Which empire? Great Britain. Great Britain. Okay, Great Britain declined. Uh, France also was uh, weakened after World War II. So a lot of former colonies wanted to have independence now. Now, 
interestingly, some of the thing about World War II is Great Britain and France, especially in Asia, humiliated by Japan in Indochina. And some people say, oh, they are actually, we call, vulnerable. Huh? You know, used to be the British, the French, can never be defeated. But they were defeated by an Asian country during World War II. So it inspired a lot of nationalists in Vietnam, in Malaysia, in uh, Indonesia. Okay, which country also controlled Indonesia and let Indi Indonesia became independent? Xu Zhengqi. Yeah, which country controlled Indonesia before? Indonesia must be controlled by India. No? I think we have a lot of Indo Indonesian population in Taiwan, right? So at least we know some of their history. Which European power control Indonesia? Mm -hmm. It's the same group of people that uh, if we play baseball against them in Taiwan, we will put up the portrait of Ko Sing Ka. Guo Xing Ye, you think Guo Xing Ye? Who is Ko Sing Ka? Do you know? Who? Yeah. So, Zhen Zhengong defeated which group of people? The Netherlands, the Dutch. Okay, the Dutch used to control Indonesia as well. Right? So, in 1950, and they were defeated by the Japanese as well. So, the Japanese did uh, the Asian a little bit favor by inspiring nationalism in Asia. Uh, now, who was the leader of Vietnam uh, against the French control after World War II? Uh, right now, it used to be called the city, used to be called Saigon, and now it's after his name. Wu Ziming, Ho Chi Minh, Wu Ziming, right? Ho Chi Minh, Wu Ziming. So that's the third wave. It's against the French, the British. Uh, so you do have what we call war against the colonization, like France. Uh, against France, uh, other places you have the colonial power said, hey, I think our days are number, means we're going to leave anyway. So why don't we just, you know, teach them how to run their government, and then gradually just leave. I think Great Britain has the idea in West Africa. They think West Africa is ready for independence. But they thought hey, East Africa, you know, maybe still 10 years away, or maybe 20, 30 years later, they will have independence. But once you started in West Africa, the East Africa also wanted to have independence. Okay, that's Great Britain. At least they didn't fight a lot of war, except one in Kenya. We call the Mao Mao Rebellion. Hmm? Not Mao Zedong, not Mao Zedong, Mao Mao. In Kenya. Okay. And the f British also arranged for the transfer of power in Malaysia, Singapore, uh, Burma, no major problem. The French said, well, we will have our colony become independent. But some, we really like it a lot, like Algeria. Algeria is very close to France. And they said, well, you know, we can have Algeria as our overseas province. 
So they fought a bitter war in Algeria until 1962. Okay, finally Algeria became independent. Where is my eye? Algeria, somewhere here. Wow,、well, here. Okay, that's France. That's Algeria. So close, right? So they won't allow this one. Uh, but they allow most other West Africa country to become independent, and they also have problem let go Vietnam.、Uh, so they fought a war and then finally defeated by Ho Chi Minh.、Okay. So not every decolonization process was peaceful. So the third wave started in Africa and Asia. Uh, India, for example, India and Pakistan, Great Britain transfer power.、Uh, so you have three wave of decolonization, and now there is a fourth wave, I think, as well.、Uh, but we don't call it decolonization. But some people say yes. This is after the collapse of the Soviet Union and the collapse of the Yugoslavia Republic. You have more countries becoming independent. Uh, but are they colonize、um, some of the Central Asian republics, or you know other republics of the Soviet Union? May think so.、Uh, the same thing with some of the countries、uh, in, under Yugoslavia. Former Yugoslavia had six republics, and all became independent.、Uh, Soviet Union, fifteen republics, all became independent, and one more, one local republic. Of Serbia also became independent. So, which country is that? The new country, Ofandu. Yeah, which country under Serbia now is independent?、Um, not talking about like Montenegro was a separate republic, Croatia was a separate republic, Slovenia is also one, and then Bosnia is one, Macedonia is one. Those are the six, right? But this one is under Serbia, also became independent, and they fought a war as well, called Kosovo. K O S O V O. The saddest things for Taiwan is they became independent, and we recognize it. They say,、oh, "Thank you, but we don't need your recognition." Because China didn't recognize it, right? China is a good friend of Serbia, and Serbia didn't like other country to recognize Kosovo. So Taiwan said, "Hey, we're going to recognize you."、Uh, they said, "Well, you know, sorry, you know, we are very sensitive here." So we we try to recognize it, you know, add one more to our list of twenty three diplomatic ally,、uh, but somehow it's almost like what your half face.、Uh, Attached to a cold butt.、Uh, that's、uh, so. This is what、uh, the fourth wave of independence. So during the process of decolonization, okay,、uh, I think the book talk about some of the things、uh, in the international environment. For example, Great Britain and France, good friends of America. Why would America want them to let go their colonies? Okay, so、uh, especially if America was fighting a cold war against the Soviet Union. So the question. Let's try. Zhang、uh, Chunsheng. Yeah, why would America want Great Britain and France? You know. They are all buddy buddies of the United States, saying, "Let go your colonies." Okay. Well,、uh, U.S. worry if you don't let go,、uh, eventually they might become independent. Then they will hate the colonial power so much they then will go to the other side. They will go to the Soviet camp, right? But also, I think. Isn't that things about World War One or World War Two? The United States went to the war to what? To make sit the cut the world safe for freedom and democracy, and you know freedom, and you continue to allow that to you know the colony 
uh, that would not be good for the United States. So the United States put a lot of pressure on Great Britain and France. And those two countries, uh, after World War II, weakened. They need a Marshall Plan to help them to rebuild. So uh, that's why we have, uh, I think the book mentioned about uh, that uh, the United States uh, supporting the decolonization in the international uh, dimension because they don't want those uh, colonies. If eventually they became independent, they will go to the Soviet camp. Okay, good example in Africa will be Mozambique and Angola. One app European powers saying, this is all we have. Without the colonies, we're not going to be great. So they hand on. In the 50s and 60s, they even add more people, send more people to their colony. You know, Great Britain and French are returning from colonies. They are sending more people to colony. Which countries in Europe, so desperate, continue to hold on uh, to power? Kang uh, Yuhong. Yang Jingxiang. Am I missing someone? Okay, Zheng Yihan. Yeah. Okay, which country? European power. Said, I don't want to let go. You know, this is all I have. And eventually, those colonies became independent in the 1970s, in the middle 1970s. We don't have a lot of European powers being colonizing powers. I don't think we can name Norway or Sweden or Austria. S South America? I mean, Euro European power controlling Africa's colonies won't let go. They also control one part of uh, China until 1999, a little gambling casino place called Macau. You know Macau? I think we have some students from Macau. Do we have anyone from Macau? No? I think Tsinghua has students from Macau. Your are the which which country controlled Macau before? Do you like the egg tart? You know, I love that kind of egg tart. Dan Ta. Hmm? You know, not just the pure egg, no, but there is some. Dan Ta is called egg tart. Which one? Ruishi Dan Ta. Never heard of Ruishi Dan Ta. What? Pu Shi. Pu Shi. Which Pu? Yeah, Portugal. Okay. So you have, I mean, nowadays I think we have to teach the cuisines to learn all the third world countries, right? Uh, like uh, there is a the Vietnamese noodle, what do we call that? Fu? Fu? A few. You know, the, uh, the Vietnamese noodle that you have the vegetable at the end, really good. You may have eaten Vietnam meat. It's called few. Few, few, I think just few. Okay, so you need to learn some. But anyway, Portugal won't let go. Angola and Mozambique, what happened? Those two became Marxists. So clear example, America knew what's going to happen. If you keep holding on, you gave the colony good excuse or rationale to turn Marxists or communists. Right? So, United States, I think at the time, 
was far-sighted enough, saying this is not good, so you need to uh, stop. Okay, let's stop here uh, and come back after the break. Please fill out those countries. And I think we have everyone on the list right now. Ready? Next week we will try. You can have the first map test. Okay? The first map test means you can miss. You can miss 10. Okay? And after that, become 5. Okay? And the third one is 3. Okay? So if you want to pass one, try next week. Okay? Map test next week. All the third world divided into the eight regions. If you have problem questions, let me know. Like uh, you said, I don't know where to put Taiwan. You know, is Taiwan? Oh, I think Taiwan is easy. I didn't give you Northeast Asia, uh, Southeast Asia. Where is Taiwan? If it's Dongbeiya or Dongnan? Or Pacific Island, I think. Don't you think Taiwan is Pacific Island? Especially if we have uh, the map turned upside down and we are facing Pacific. So we have Pacific Island. Okay, take a break. Very sad that in Taiwan we don't have a uh, engine at the end of Hanchen or, you know, like we pull the engine and then the Taiwan is like a little bow just stealing away from China. Right? This, this cannot, cannot happen. happen. Sorry. Don't, Don't you think, think some of the people, people who want Taiwan independence uh, would like to see that Taiwan somehow here uh, put an engine at the back and then steer the boat away from China? But we can do it. Just like another country called Cuba wanted to steer away from the United States and cannot do it. So what's the best solution? We switch. How about that? You know, our, we all move to Cuba, and Cuban people move to Taiwan. We all have baseball. We all have sugar cane and tropical weathers. And Cuban will feel comfortable with a communist neighbor, and we feel comfortable with a capitalist neighbor. Hmm? We, also, we both have typhoon or hurricanes. I think it's a very good location. But uh, any other qu question? Which country you have problem? The assistant says some of you have trouble. No? You have no controversy at all? All those eight regions, all the country belong to the eight regions? There is only one country which is very difficult. The very first one. Which one is the very first one? Hmm? On your list, which one is the first one? You might have trouble. Afghanistan. Where do you put Afghanistan? Middle East and North Africa, South Asia, or Central Asia? Well, that's the only country I think you have problem, right? What's the other, any other countries you have problem? I think South America, very clear, yes? <laughs> Afghanistan. You can justify, you know, all three can be right. All three can be right. Uh, but I will put them as South Asia. But with a stand, they should belong to Central Asia, right? But Central Asia are all former Soviet Republic. So Afghanistan is not. Uh, Afghanistan humiliate Soviet Union before. So, so I, I think, think it's South, South Asia. Asia. Okay, okay, I put, put Afghanistan, Afghanistan as South, South Asia. Asia. Okay. Any, Any other question? question? Yes. yes. Botswana, why, you, why would you have problem with in Botswana? Botswana is north of South Africa. So north of South Africa, where is it? You know South Africa. Where is South Africa, right? So, north of South Africa, belong to where? Which region?
just, just very, just right north of South Africa. Then which region? South Africa is which region? Which one? Sub Sub Saharan Africa. Right? All the countries south of the Sahara Desert. So Botswana is that one is there is no controversy about that one. Okay. I, I think the question we might have would be you know, like on the border of those, where do you belong to? Any other question? Okay. So you should be able to do it. Uh, I don't see any trouble with uh, South America and Central America, right? Of course, maybe, who knows, uh, some Colombians say Panama belonged to South America because it used to belong to Colombia and the United States wanted to have a canal so they got Panama becoming independent so they can have the canal. Okay, Panama uh, But otherwise, I, I, I don't see any problem. You can separate Caribbean islands and Central America from South America. That's easy. Okay. East and Southeast Asia. Some people might have a question here with this country called Myanmar. Where do we put Myanmar? M Y A N M A R, Myanmar, Southeast Asia or South Asia, Southeast Asia, South Asia. Which one? Southeast Asia, because it belongs to the Southeast Asian organization, ASEAN, right? So that's uh, Myanmar here. Uh, this one. Okay. Otherwise, I don't see any. Uh, maybe this one, some people will ask the question. Uh, PNG. What is PNG? Papua New Guinea. Taiwan, we have a close relation with that country. Ba Niu. You think Ba Niu, PN. Papua New Guinea. New Guinea. Papua New Guinea. Do we put that as Southeast Asian or as Pacific Island? Hmm? I think we put them as Southeast Asian. Okay? Papua New Guinea. Uh, otherwise, no problem. Okay. Let's go back to the chapters. Uh, we learn about the decolonization. Uh, and then the first word, the sentence, I think one of the sentences they mentioned about uh, colonies and the big problem of colonies uh, is this one. Okay. Uh, we already talked about nation state. So I'm going to ask you this question about the nation state. There is a statement about uh, European countries, they are the one who, uh, they are the nations who establish the states. And the third world countries, a lot of them, especially in Africa and Asia, they are the countries, they are the states trying to establish a nation. So what does that mean since we talk about state and nation so much? One way full. Yeah. yeah. What, what does that mean? Europe, Europe, Europe you, you have, have the nations, nations who establish the states. In, in the, the third, third world, world, you have the states trying to establish the nation. The okay. Mm -hmm. 
Oh. Yeah, but what do we mean by states? Having states trying to establish the nation in the third world. So you have a geographical area, but you don't have the people that have a sense of belongingness. So they try to create this new identity. Okay, now it's difficult in the third world because the people used to say, you know, I belong to this particular tribal group or ethnic group. And suddenly people said, no, uh, you're no longer there. Uh, you are a new nation, okay? New people. So suddenly you have to do what? We call shift or transfer your identity from the immediate local one to a higher but more we call abstract one. No. For example, let's say, you know, because we have so many uh, problems in Taiwan, you know, people say, oh, Tongdu, Zhu, Qing, right? A lot of trouble. So why don't we just establish a new term for us? We are, uh, whether you're Hakka, you're mainlander descendants, where you're Aborigines, we are all Formosans. Huh? Formosan. Okay, so, wow. You, don't you think if we are all Formosans, no, we are beautiful. That's fine, you know. Formosans, beautiful island. We are beautiful islanders, right? So suddenly, all the people say, oh, I'm no longer Taiwanese. No, I'm no longer Hakka or I'm no longer uh, Sao Zhu or, 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 or other Aboriginal groups. I'm no longer Chinese. I am Formosan. I'm going to go up. People say, who are you? I am Formosan. Now, don't you think it takes a while for people to say, I am Formosan? So that's the same thing with Nigeria, right? Never had Nigeria before, and suddenly you're called Nigeria. Never before you have a country called Singapore, right? It's a city, and then suddenly Singapore is a country. Uh, people, Chinese, Malay, Indians, they're all Singaporeans. Okay. So that's the, the, the difficult part uh, of transfer your, we call allegiance. What do you mean by allegiance? Xiao Zhong the Xiao, okay. Allegiance. You transfer your allegiance to a new identity. So we, we know the difficulty of the third world is uh, before they have the, the states, they have, you know, before they have the nation, they have the states. Huh? Uh, the first world, the European powers, they have the nations first uh, seeking to establish a state. Now, so what's, what is a state according to the text? I think, uh, if we want to talk about state versus society, uh, people say that is a dichotomy. Okay, state versus society. Okay, this is a dichotomy. Dichotomy means two things, right? So, so what is a state? I think we have to understand what is a state. So according to the book, you have six features. The first one is very important, is the state has power. Okay, yeah. Uh, but not just power. We call legitimate power. Okay. I think a mafia also has a lot of power. Right? But not legitimate. Okay. So uh, legitimate means le they can use the force legitimately. So, they have army, they have police. Uh, so you can have a legitimate use of force. Mafia also possess a lot of weapons. Uh, but when they use that, that's illegal. So that's uh, very important. They have monopoly of the legitimate use of power, of forces. Okay? Uh, 
Uh, also very interesting, uh, the one we always remember, what is a country? We always said some of the basic elements in Taiwan, uh, so this is uh, from your high school textbook, so I'm going to ask you to try to remember from your high school textbook, Ye Zi Yu. Okay. Yeah. What is a country? What is a state? You said, uh, at least you have something, basic stuff. Like Taiwan, we said we are a sovereign country, right? So what's, what's the, some of the basic components we have? People, okay, so we have people, okay, so that uh, very important, we have people, uh, but also we also talk about a lot of people un in a, you have a land, territory, okay, usually you have a territory, so a state also has a territory, uh, so means that, that government rule over a certain area, okay, now why would Kurt? Kurdish people don't have, you know, it's not a state yet because they don't have a domain. They don't have a territory belonging to them. Okay. Uh, yes, they are in Iraq. They are in Iraq. They are in eastern Turkey here. You have a word here called Kurdistan. Obviously, India must be very sympathetic to Kurds. They call this place Kurdistan. I bought this map in India. Okay, for how much? 100 Taiwanese dollar. Okay, so uh, Kurdistan here. So they, but they don't have a, a specific territory. So territory is very important. Uh, and also they have to have some kind of government. Hmm? Government exercising, you know, control. Uh, so mostly you have a centralized power in the capital. Okay. Not, not always the case, but m almost everyone has centralized power. Uh, so government with centralized power. Uh, the fourth one is uh, they also have we call in Taiwan we love to call sovereignty. Right? What is sovereignty? Uh, very important word. Sovereignty. Wu De Chang. Yeah. What is sovereignty? The word that we always love in Taiwan. Sovereignty. ZQ. What is that? Hey, you have to love the Q word, okay? Because uh, we're using a system with a lot of Q nowadays. Zhuquan, okay. I have to remember that Q word. It's qi, okay? Quan, Zhuquan. So, uh, I think this is going to be something to measure whether you love Taiwan or not. You love Taiwan, is okay. So that's sovereignty. Okay. Uh, if you have problem with sovereignty being challenged, uh, then you are having problem. You're not no longer a country. For example, uh, there are countries which the rebel set up an alternative sovereign nation or you know a uh, center of power then the country no longer have sovereignty uh, example uh, what would be an example that country having problem with sovereignty okay Somalia right Somali land already ceded Somali land uh, became independent uh, so Somalia have trouble because they don't have a government. They have an anarchy situation in Somalia. Okay. Also, they want to 
uh, have we call maintain the rule of law. Somalia doesn't have rule of law. Most countries have rule of law uh, in the entire region. And then the last one, okay, the country try to have a link with with international community. Now, some people will ask the question: Is international recognition necessary for a state? If a state is not recognized by other countries, do we have a state? Hmm? Do we have a state? Show Borkai. Yeah, do we have a state if a state is not recognized by the international community at all? No? Uh, so here we have this country called Somaliland. Nobody recognizes it? Is that a country? But the people is living very well there. You have a government, you have an election, you have rule of law, you have territory. You have monopoly of the legitimate use of force, but nobody recognizes it. Compared to this one, everybody recognizes, but it's an anarchy, right? A lot of pirates in Somalia and chaos. Now, which one you would rather live in? He said, Of course, I want to live in Somalia because I can be a pirate and get rich, right? But uh, I think people probably prefer Somali land. Uh, diplomatic recognition is not a prerequisite for a state. Okay? But it would be nice to have it. I think we need to ask this question you know, in Taiwan. What happens if no country in the world recognizes us? Are we still a country? If nobody recognizes us. You know, China is becoming more powerful now. If China demanded that, you know, if you don't recognize Taiwan, there will be trade embargo, all kinds of sanctions against that country. And everybody shift. Is Taiwan still a country? Yes, we are still a country. So uh, international recognition uh, might be useful. At least we have this, we call, you know, relation in the international economy, you know. We are not totally isolated. So, uh, the state and the nation, most important thing, the difference. Uh, in a country, most country, we have these two key words. A nation, we are talking about homogeneity. Uh, in a state, a lot of times, we talk about heterogeneity. Yeah. Who invented this word? This sociologist is crazy. Okay, uh, Zhang Peiqi. Yeah, what's the, these two words here? You know? Oh, you, you are a sociology major, huh? Okay, so good. I mean, we are victims of sociologists. They gave us strange terms. What is homogeneous? Tong Like here, this university. You know. I, I, that's the reason you need some, some, some someone from outside to shake you up. Huh? Uh, otherwise you're so homogeneous. What's heterogeneous? Heterogeneity. Yiji. Okay. So a nation you feel comfortable, you identify with, is homogeneous. In a state, most of the time, except Japan, you will find all kinds of people. So that's why we say heterogeneous. You know, all kinds of culture. You know, countries like America, they have to celebrate. Uh, all kinds of uh, holiday. They have the Jewish holiday they need to observe. I remember when I was a TA, teaching assistant, 
for my professor. He would say, "Hey, you know, tomorrow will be our Jewish holiday. I'm not going to teach. So, you know, go ahead, you know, teach on behalf of me." So I went, you know, to teach his class. But then on Chinese New Year, I cannot say, "Professor, I won't show up tomorrow because、uh, tomorrow is Chinese New Year."、Uh, but right now they have in America. They don't call Chinese New Year. What do they call? The Asian Lunar New Year. 亚裔阴历年 ，Why? Well, well, which one do you prefer? You want Korean New Year or Asian? No, no. But in addition to Korean and Chinese and Taiwanese, who else also celebrate this New Year? Vietnamese. Okay. Japanese didn't do it anymore. Okay. Ah,、uh, Japanese before in the 19th century they did. But after Meiji Reformation, they said, "Well, we want to be Westernized, so they got rid of it.、Huh? We still have it. Those four, okay,、uh, those four we call the Confucian Society: South Korea, China, Vietnam, and Taiwan. We we still have that.、Uh, so, in America, heterogeneous. In countries like Australia today, also heterogeneous. Canada, also heterogeneous. Canada." Uh, in addition to the British and the French, who, which one was also very big in Canada? Guess which group of people? Well, Chinese only in Vancouver. Okay.、Uh, also Toronto, I would say.、Uh, I remember when you mentioned about Chinese in Vancouver. I went to Vancouver way back 20 years ago. Okay, in 1989, my first time went to Vancouver, and. The rumor or the talk of the town at the time was a Hong Kong business people came to Vancouver, and then the real estate agent took him to see 15 real estate, you know, houses. He bought 14 with cash. <laughs> so the Vancouver, the local Canadians are very upset because、uh, they cannot afford. You know, Hong Kong people say. Wow, this is so cheap here. Look, you know, the money we spend, you know, in Hong Kong can only get us, you know, this little unit here or a parking space. We can buy a big house in Vancouver. So they all went to buy.、Uh, but in addition to Chinese in Canada, a major group you would not never thought about Italians. A lot of Italians、uh, in Toronto and Ottawa. Okay,、uh, so some of the people you would not know, like Germans in Brazil. German, Argentina. Some of them had connection with Nazi, but not all. Okay, so there are a lot of different group of people. Like my niece in Ottawa, you said, "Wow, you go to school in Ottawa. Who are your classmates?" In elementary school in Ottawa, a lot of Somali people. You know, people from Somalia.、Uh, So, so、uh, the whole world right now, most of the countries are heterogeneous now. Okay, with globalization,、uh, homogeneous, just Japan, I think. You know, not a lot of countries. So that's a very important idea. Uh, uh, but they do, okay,、uh, try to have a common purpose. You know, you don't have a homogeneous basis, but you try to create a new identity. You try to Have a common purpose for economic development, uh, for uh, modernization. Uh, also, uh, if we look at the the state, okay, there are two very important words. Okay, one is we call capacity. One is we call autonomy. Okay, now. Capacity and autonomy. Capacity is、uh, is the state itself powerful enough? Okay, and versus society. And nowadays, I what do you think about Taiwan? Is our state powerful or our society more powerful? Luo Chen Hao. 尹靖威 ，Yeah, what do you think in Taiwan? Which one is more powerful, the state or the society? 
the society. Why? Give me some evidence. The media. Okay. So the media, the people said no. Uh, say yes to death penalty. That's. So the state said, "Oh, we cannot say no. We have to say yes to death penalty." How about China? The state is more powerful than society. Now, but uh, if does that mean China state has more capacity? In doing things, more power to do whatever they want. For example, before Olympic Games in Beijing, I was in Beijing in 2007 and 2008. It's easy for China, you know, if they want to do something uh, like uh, they want to make the city look good. Some of the ghettos or old housing, they have to get rid of them. In Taiwan. What do we do? How do we get rid of the old housing? We have to pay them a lot, right? That's one. Or, you know, sometimes the rich, pe the, the, the developer said, "You don't want to move, I pay you. Don't want to move, I just burn it." Right? 放火把它烧了 Right? That's one way. Okay. Uh, I'm not encouraging that. Okay? Uh, but there is a third way in China. China just put a word outside the building. Okay, just paint it. Hi. Okay, it's gone. Ah,、uh, yeah, we have what we call Ding Zi Hu, right? But mostly you have Cai. That's easy in China. So the state does have the capacity, and some people in China confide it to us, like Tou Lo Gong, saying, "You know, we are doing everything now to." Before we become democratized, because once we become democratized, we cannot do anything. So we are, we are, we are doing all this development right now,、uh, before we can. But at least it's powerful. But it doesn't mean that every authoritarian state, the state, has the capacity to do a lot of things. Some of the African countries authoritarian enough, but very weak. Cannot do anything. So, this dichotomy of state and society.、Uh, some countries we have powerful state and also powerful society. Some we have powerful state but very weak society. Some we have weak society, weak state and weak society. Some we have weak states but powerful society. I think Taiwan belong to weak states. Uh, weak state and powerful society now. Okay, some other countries, people are capable of doing things. That will be called the you know strong society, but also strong states. They can carry out things.、Uh, it is important. Some people will say this word autonomy. What's the autonomy mean? Autonomy. 孙明文 ，Yeah, do you know what's the word autonomy mean? Auto, auto, automobile automation. Are you engineer major? No. What is your major? Oh yeah, well, okay. So automation. What do we mean by automation? You know, all the factory need to be automated. Automation. Zhongwa. Okay, so what is autonomy? Autonomy means, 自治 Autonomy means you have control of your own. So here, state autonomy means the state is not being controlled by the society. So what does that mean? If a state is not controlled by the society,
Well, that would be almost like dictators, right? But when we talk about autonomy, we we think about something more positive here. State autonomy means the state will not be captured by the interest groups of the society. The state has its own decision making. It's not. It's almost like we call insula. You know, insulation. Insulation, like、uh, you know, Jie <laughs> Yuan. Okay, so the state is insula, insulated from the society. What? Not like right now. For example, right now, if we have、uh, a policy of,、uh, let's say, development on on on、uh, economic development, uh, some of our industries will say, "Well, you need to do this. You need to this, do this." So it's not going to help. Majority of people, but it's going to be preferred by small interest group. Then the state does not have autonomy. Okay.、Uh, there is a new word. Remember,、uh, big corporation. Okay. So some people right now say there is a corporate corporatocracy. The government, the state, has been captured and controlled by big corporation, and you made all the dis- the policies benefiting those. So in Taiwan,、uh, for example, the healthcare.、Uh, so far, our healthcare plan is a benefiting the pharmaceutical company, the big pharmaceutical company, pharmaceutical company, 药大药厂药药商 Uh, they have influence in the government. So most of the time, okay, you will find third world country not just being penetrated by the local elite, but also penetrated by what? By the international multinational cooperation, the MNCS, okay, multinational cooperation. They will force you to do certain things. To help their industry, they force you to open up your market. Like in Taiwan, well, in the name of what? Liberalization. We love that word, liberalization, 自由化 So what does that mean? Means all the foreign banks can coming in, right, to Taiwan. All the insurance company used to have what? We do. What kind of insurance company do we have in Taiwan before? Hmm. 看看同学对我们的保险业有没有很熟？邱亚轩。Yeah. Do you know any insurance company in Taiwan? Oh,、uh, yeah. 什么人寿？不，呃，长寿。No, that's yen. That's cigarettes. Okay. Any other company you know? 国泰。Okay, so 国泰 a big insurance company. What else? Oh, that that's that's from outside, don't you think? New Year, what else?、Uh, all kinds of outside, 大都会 Mets, 啊，还有什么？安安泰 OK, a lot of, but those originally the government tried to protect the local insurance company, but the foreigners that You know, keep putting pressure on the government to open up our market, saying you need to liberalize your insurance market. The 保险市场要自由化 so they penetrate it. So if, like China right now, still has great autonomous autonomy because they they don't care about other countries, but in Taiwan we have big problem right now.、Uh, in the name of、uh, liberalization. We have to open up all kinds of markets.、Uh, way back in Taiwan,、uh, we were forced to open up our agriculture market.、Uh, Japan, also another country, forced to open up its rice market.、Uh, Japanese said, "Well, but we don't eat other countries' rice. You know, we just have a particular feel for Japanese rice." Uh, and the Japanese are very patriotic. They eat Japanese rice, but when they found out the Japanese rice is five times more expensive than the import rice, 
How patriotic can you be? 啊，你有多爱国？假如进口的比较只有只有本地产的五分之一，就是 I'm a student. I'm sorry. I can't be patriotic when I make a lot of money. Right? So, uh, this is what we call autonomy. Autonomy means you are insulated. You can, uh, you're not being penetrated by the interest group that will affect policy making. Uh, that kind of government can make decision for greater population, uh, for the welfare of the biggest uh, portion of the population. So very important in those kind of states. And this is what the third world doesn't have. The third world states being with a lot, not with a lot of capacity already, big problem. And then they are being captured by domestic big interest groups and also the international interest groups, international company. So they don't have autonomy. That's the big problem in the third world, the capacity and the autonomy. Uh, and other problem with the third world state, uh, in the textbook, uh, mentioned about, uh, you said, a defined border uh, but we have border issues. Uh, what kind of border issue do we have here between India and Pakistan and China? Huang Yaping. Yeah. India, Pakistan, and China. You learn in the history there is some problem here. Controversial area here. Pamir. Kashmir. Very close to Pamir. Kaujin Pamir Gaoyuan. Kashmir. Okay, that's a controversial area. You know, undefined territory. And China and India even went to a war in 1962. You know, because of the undefined territory here. So, protecting your border uh, is a big problem. Uh, Somalia and Ethiopia. Look at Somalia. Don't you think Somalia is like a seven? Hmm? And those people here in Ethiopia are also Somali. Don't you think they should belong to here? Look the, make, make the map look more natural? But this is the original border. What, what do you do? Right? So they fought a war, but no solution. Okay? So that's another problem of uh, the borders. Now, we, we talk about colonization. They create, we call artificial borders. What do we mean by artificial border? We have artificial turf in baseball. Do we have artificial turf in Taiwan's baseball field? We have artificial turf in No. Which is not good, which the, the player got injured a lot. I remember when I was in Texas, the cowboy, uh, the football team, play on artificial turf. And then they want, when they want to change the turf after a few years, we have to go and buy, you know, like, oh, this is part of the cowboy artificial turf. We bought one and put it in our living room. <laughs> Uh, but artificial that's a big problem because you will have people from the same tribal groups in two different countries. And then what will happen is there's a very important word uh, I will try, try to remember. We call irredentist. I R R E N D I irredentism. How do you translate in your dictionary? Irredentist. I R E N. I R E N. D I. Uh, irredentism. I'm sorry. D I T I S M. D I T I S M. Okay. What is it? I R 
E N E I T I S M。有没有字典？有没有问题？你的没有。来 ，Let me try。我自己动。I R R。What is it? Do you have it? What? Mean to 统一主义 What does that mean? It means that you have people. Belonging to another nation, but in another state. Okay, people in one state, but their nationality is of another neighboring country. Okay, uh, then it's very easy for, for example, uh, Tamil people in Sri Lanka. You have Tamil people in India, so India said, "Hey, why don't you become independent and join us? You are our brothers, right? Instead of being Sinhalese in Sri Lanka." Uh, so this, who know, this might happen if Taiwan one day became independent. You know, you have people from Taiwan say, "But we are Chinese." So the China said, "We are going to help our brothers in Taiwan." Okay, that would be irredentist. Okay, people、uh, from one country but want to be associate with their motherland, and usually their motherland is very close. So that's a big problem in Somalia. There's all kinds of problem in Sri Lanka in different countries.、Uh, they want to join the other group. Okay, irredentist, 民族统一主义 Okay, let's stop here.